Okay, over to Jack for our reading. Verse 10. A blind beggar receives his sight. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be, a guest, to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Good morning everybody. It's good to get the mask off. It's um, not good on the sinuses. Um, thank you Jack for reading that to us from, from Leicester. Um, you're becoming quite hairy, aren't you, you're during the lockdown? Uh, but uh, thanks, thanks for reading that uh, to us. Um, I wonder what sort of television programs you watch. Uh, I watch a variety of television programs. Uh, but the one that um, I like to look at occasionally, and I can only do it occasionally because it's on a Monday and we have a house group on a Monday, so I watch it uh, every alternate week, is called Only Connect. Um, it's a, it's a, a programme that pits two teams of, of three people against each other in um, uh, different sorts of puzzles. And the, and the third uh, puzzle or, or problem is called the wall. And it's a grid of, of 16 uh, tiles or, or buttons. And on these tiles or buttons uh, are written one or maybe two or three words. And there is a connection between four of them. In actual fact, there's often a connection between more than four of them, but uh, you have to work out which ones are right. And the, and the leader pushes these buttons, being helped on, on two sides by uh, the fellow team uh, mates. And when they get the right connections, the four tiles go to the top of the grid and then they are left with, with 12, and they have to try and work out the next uh, four connections. And when that happens, um, it's a bit complicated, but Andy's got a little video, and he'll, he'll show you to explain it. Uh, Marvel characters do Thor, Heimdall, Thor, Odin. No, so that's going to be another one. Um, would it say old currency? So Lira, Frank, Frank, Mark, Frank. and Punt. No, so leave out Frank. Okay, oh, there we go. So, um, so Heimdall, Thor, Fenrir is, is also in the, the Marvel films. Uh, Fenrir, Loki. Okay, leaving out Heimdall. Uh, uh, leaving out Loki. Leaving out Thor. Okay, there we go. Right. Three strikes and you're out now. So 
Well, there you are. I hope we get the idea. It's, it, it's quite good fun, and most of the connections are a little bit beyond me. But um, when the connections are explained, you suddenly think, oh, how amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Um, and uh, a number of times, it's reminded me of the Bible, because the, the Bible is a series of stories, poems, and hymns uh, and sayings, and they're arranged in books. And though, although sometimes these books are connected, they're often disconnected uh, or they're standalone. And they've been written by 35 to 40 people. But all of them have themes or threads that run through them. Um, of course, as evangelicals, we know that God was the true author of, of, of all that there is in the Bible, and he inspired the writers what to say. Now, I've been a Christian for, for many years, and I've heard people explaining uh, to me some of the themes and um, have great pleasure in discovering some of them for myself. And it's lovely when I get a eureka moment when I'm reading the Bible and I see a connection that I haven't seen before between one part of the Bible and another. The Bible uses the word mystery many times, and these themes are a mystery until they are uncovered or, or they are revealed. While reading the Bible, I've often wondered why it is that God chose the people that he did to reveal his will and accomplish his purposes. In Hebrews chapter 11, there is mentioned a long list of names of characters from the Old Testament. Some of these characters are very good uh, and, and, and they're nice people, people you'd like to meet. But in fact, many of them um, have questionable aspects to their character. Some of them are murderers, liars, fornicators, cheats. But the trait that they all have in common is that they have a faith in, all, in an almighty and sovereign God. And this is one of the strong themes that runs through the whole of the Bible, the theme of faith. Another theme that runs through the Bible is that of being chosen. The nation of Israel, or the Jewish nation, was chosen by God for no other reason than that a sovereign God can choose who he wants to. This choosing of Israel was a working out of the promise God made to Abraham that his seed would be as numerous as the sand on the seashore and the stars in the heaven. And we can see this being worked out in the Bible and indeed in the world today, where all over the world there are Jewish communities, often holding prominent and important positions. God keeping his promises is another theme in the Bible. God always keeps his promise, even if the time scale is not always what we want. Quite often I say to God, God, why can't you hurry up? Why can't you do now? But that's not God's way. God has a plan, and he will keep to his plan. And there are many other themes running through the Bible that I can mention, but for the sake of time, I only want to mention one more at this time, and that is the theme of a redeemer God, a saviour, or as the Jewish people refer to him, the Messiah. The Messiah was promised for God's chosen people of Israel, not exclusively, because there are exceptions, but in the Old Testament mostly. Running through the Old Testament is the promise that the Messiah would come out of the tribe of Judah and be a direct descendant of David, the second king of Israel. However, because when he came to uh, the, the people uh, in New Testament times, uh, in a manner that had been foretold, and that's another thread in the Bible, he wasn't recognised. In fact, he was rejected. And the plan of salvation was opened up in equal measure to everyone, both Jews and Gentiles. So that covers the whole of the world. And this brings us close to the point of time in the two stories we've had read to us by Jack, where Jesus meets two characters that in so many ways uh, represent each one of us today, although they are very different. And I just hope to show you 
um, some lessons that we can learn from this. In fact, it was about this time of the year when these events happened because Jesus had told his, his disciples in the preceding verses that they would be heading to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, the most important celebration in the Jewish calendar. Passover would be, will be celebrated by the worldwide Jewish community next weekend. What is more, this will be the last time that Jesus would pass that way because he was heading to Jerusalem to die, to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament. And it is Easter time shortly when we remember his death. It was therefore providential that these uh, two characters that we've, we've read about this morning met Jesus and had their lives turned around. There wouldn't have been another opportunity. But the mindset of these two men were very, dif were very different as were their needs. One of the men knew he had a problem. He was blind, he was dependent on others, he couldn't earn a living, there was no social uh, support system for him. He could only beg. Uh, he was, to all intents and purposes, destitute. His only hope was to catch the attention of Jesus and hope that the stories of healing that had been circulated were true and that his life could be changed. Uh, just by, in passing, although his name is not mentioned in the Luke account, it's most likely that his name was Bartimaeus because uh, Mark rec records a very similar story. The other man, Zacchaeus, didn't appear to have any such needs. He was a rich tax collector. Tax collectors had opportunities to make money both legally and illegally. He had an important role and he was feared because of his power and his authority. His future was secure. The only possible reason he had to be slightly unhappy with life was possibly the fact that not many people liked him. His countrymen despised anybody who worked for the Romans, the occupying army in Israel at the time. So his circle of friends was probably limited to a few like-minded people and his family. It appeared that the blind man, uh, Bartimaeus, came uh, across Jesus by chance. In verse 36 of chapter 18 that Jack read to us, it says that he had to ask what was happening when he heard all the noise going on around about him. Zacchaeus, on the other hand, was just curious He'd heard about Jesus, but what could Jesus do to enhance his life? Nothing really, but as is the way of all us uh, human beings, we do like to see personalities, A-listers if you like, to tell our friends we bumped into so-and-so, the likes of, well, perhaps Boris Johnson, Marcus Rashford, the Queen, Kim Kardashian, Maybe those don't appeal to you. In fact, I did look up the top celebrities of 2001 and I hadn't really heard of many of the, the top ones. came across a guy who was called The Weeknd. Apparently, he's a rapper. Never heard of him in my life, but he's worth 100 million. So uh, uh, he's doing quite well. Perhaps he's a tax collector, I don't know. Um, poor old Zach here, so. He had a problem in a crowd. He was short. In a crowd, he couldn't see anything apart from people's backs. So what he did was he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to get just, just a glimpse of Jesus. The blind man had a problem too. He couldn't run to Jesus and grab him to catch his attention. All he could do was to shout, scream and holler, Jesus, son of David. This was much to the annoyance of people round about him. Keep quiet, they said, Jesus can't be bothered with you. But they underestimated how important it was for Bartimaeus to catch Jesus' attention and how important he was to Jesus. Now it's not without coincidence that Bartimaeus used the term son of David because this was the messianic term the Jews used for the promised Messiah. He recognised who Jesus was. He had identified him with the thread that runs right through the Old Testament 
of a promised Messiah. On the other hand, the last thing Zacchaeus wanted was to be noticed, a person of importance climbing a tree to see an A-lister. How undignified that would be. But Jesus knew all about Zacchaeus as well. He saw something deep in his heart that could be changed given the opportunity. Maybe an unhappiness with his lifestyle of cheating. Just knowing that there had to be something better. As Jesus passed by, he looked up into the tree, probably much to Zacchaeus' horror, and said, I see you up there. Come down. I want to have a meal with you. There was probably a mixture of laugh and horror amongst the crowd around Jesus. Some who recognised Jesus saying, I couldn't believe it. Zacchaeus, that rich, posh, important tax collector, was caught by Jesus hiding in a tree. Can you imagine it? He looked so embarrassed as he climbed down out of the tree on Jesus' instructions. Others were saying, I was really disappointed with Jesus. He decided to eat with Zacchaeus. Fancy eating with a dishonest sinner like Zacchaeus. Why? He's the dreaded tax collector. I'm so disappointed with Jesus' judgment. The outcome of these meetings was very different in many ways, but on the other hand, similar in others. The blind man, Bartimaeus, was cured. His sight returned, or possibly he saw for the first time in his life. His life was changed. He could work instead of begging and enjoy everything around him. And we read that he followed Jesus, praising God. His life was so much richer than before. Zacchaeus, on the other hand, was so convicted of his past sins that he gave away much of his wealth, became poorer in order to make amends for his deceit, but he became richer as well because he recognised who Jesus was. Jesus said of Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this house because this man too has become a son of Abraham. By this he meant that although Zacchaeus was a Jew, his faith had brought him to become part of God's family. We read that Jesus did many miracles, signs and wonders. And the last words of John's Gospel says that uh, if all of the things that Jesus did were written down in, in books, perhaps the world couldn't contain them all. So we must believe that everything that is recorded about the life of Jesus has significance for us today. Now, I don't know how many people are listening to me today and how many will listen later um, to the recording, but we get about 150 to 200 weekly hits on YouTube, Facebook and Zoom. And I know that they're not all part of our uh, fellowship here at Bushy Baptist Church. So my prayer is that at least, uh, for at least one person, this sermon will have had some significance. Maybe the sermon that our prayer, maybe the person that our prayer ministry team uh, mentioned this morning that, that Dorothy read out to us. We could say that there are four kinds of people listening to what I've said. More importantly, what God uh, has directed me to say. There are those who really don't care. They have no time for God, don't want to know, and will never change their mind. These are the saddest of all the people, because the Bible says very clearly that unless they have a change of heart, their eternal future will be one of pain, suffering, anguish, regret, and, and destruction. There is no way of avoiding the term the Bible uses, eternal damnation. The final verse that, uh, that Jack read, uh, a record of Jesus saying, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. Lost. Lost from what? Well, Jesus meant lost from an eternity in heaven to an eternity in hell. There's no other explanation for that verse. I really wish that there were. They are like many people who saw what Jesus did 
and listen to his words, but their life remain unchanged. And there are many people in, in, in the world like that today, unfortunately. Then there are others like Zacchaeus who are comfortable with life and can't uh, really see any need to change. But maybe in the back of their mind there is the thought that there has to be more to life than this. Has to be more to life than me, me, me and the things that I love doing. Jesus wants you to climb down from your metaphorical tree and consider his claims to be the Son of God who can offer salvation to all who have faith in him. In a sense, Jesus wants to have a meal with you. He wants to talk to you on a personal level. He wants to talk to you one to one. Then there are others who, like Bartimaeus, are very unhappy, know that there has to be more to life than just existing, but don't know where to get help, but are prepared to take the chance and find out more. And then there are those who have already asked Jesus uh, to come into their hearts um, and have recognised what Jesus accomplished on the cross where he died for them all those Easter's ago. But it's to the first three categories of people that I've mentioned, I would like to challenge you to look and see where you fit in in relation to Bartimaeus and Zacchaeus. Do you know you have a problem or do you believe everything is fine? Now, um, up in front of you, and it's been there for a while, um, so I hope it hasn't distracted you too much, there is uh, a chart showing the differences between uh, the blind man and the tax collector. And if you look at these, these differences, you might think, well, I don't, feel, I don't fit into any of those extremes. No, and that's the whole point. But somewhere between the extremes of a blind man who was destitute and a rich man who thought he didn't have uh, anything to, to gain, that fits you, just as that fits me. Two weeks ago, um, Helen ended her sermon with the words, now is the time. I would do the same by saying to believers, now is the time to wake up, glorify Jesus in all you do, and decide where you fit into God's harvest plan. <clears throat> but my main message is to the non-believers. I want to remind you of a thread I mentioned earlier that runs through the Bible and that is of man's need for a saviour. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, man has been unable to meet the requirements that God laid down, and the consequence of this is death, both spiritual and physical. On our own, we can't make amends and bridge the gap that exists between us and God. The Bible calls this sin, and we need someone who hasn't sinned to do that on our behalf. We need a saviour, and that saviour is the one promised throughout the Old Testament, the Messiah, God, born as a man, Jesus, the person we've been considering this, this morning, and the person who changed the lives of Bartimaeus and Zacchaeus. And what he did for them, uh, what he did for, for those two people, he can also do for you. I just want to um, challenge you in, in closing uh, with a, another slide that if you feel you fit into the, into the category of there is more to life than this and you want to know a bit more about how you can understand it um, and you haven't got a direct contact with Bushy Baptist Church, I would ask you to go to our website and it's up there in front of you. Um, or I'd ask you to, to email us, info at bushybaptist.org.uk, or to use the telephone 01923 801 643 and contact us. But if you don't want to even do that, I would just ask you to consider asking someone to send you one of these two books, Why Jesus and Why Easter. They're the same books just got different covers but you might be saying over the next uh, week or so what's Easter got to me 
Well, if you think that, it's got to do with me, but if you think that, just contact our office and ask them to send you this booklet. Or if um, either over the next few weeks or any time in the future, you think, why Jesus? What has Jesus got to do with me? Contact our church office and ask them to send you a booklet. If you don't want anybody to follow you up, they won't. If you do want somebody to follow you up, then that will be our pleasure. But whatever your situation this morning, may God bless you, may God keep you, and may God make himself known to you in, in the days ahead.